D2L's progress tool can offer you and even your students some simple reporting on how frequently they are engaged in your course. This can help you determine if students are drifting away from your course so you can take steps to bring them back. Depending on how you design your course, both within and outside D2L, this data may be more or less useful to you, but knowing what's available means you may be able to take advantage of what you can learn in the progress tool. As the professor, I can access the progress tool for any student in two ways. One is the class list. I click the drop down menu caret next to a student's name and choose view progress to see an individual student's progress report. If I click edit course on the nav bar, class progress has a link on the edit course or course administration screen. And this gives me a list of my students with some brief information in each row. If I click on the student's name, that gives me their full progress report. Now, here at Canisius, a lot of what the progress tool presents may be a bit redundant and not very helpful. And in a moment, I'll show you how you can customize what you see here to remove a lot of extraneous information. But for now, let's look at a few useful things. Probably the simplest bit of information can be found down toward the bottom of the list of tools on the left-hand side, Course Access. If I click that, I'm going to get a brief report of when the student has accessed the course in the last 30 days. It'll show me dates that they have accessed the course, and at the top it'll show me last accessed. Obviously, if a student hasn't been in the course space for, say, two weeks, or there are big gaps in the last 30 days, that may point to a problem that I should address with the student. Further up the list of tools on the left-hand side is content. If I click that, D2L presents me with a report showing me how many times a student has visited individual topics in the content area. So for example, these are modules that I've installed in the content area. If I click this caret to the left of this information, I will see that of the three topics here, the student has visited all three. It shows me the date they last visited these topics and it shows me how many times in the past this student visited each of these topics. Recall that a topic is anything you install in a content module. It can be an uploaded file, such as this Word document or .docx file, or a PDF file, or a PowerPoint slide deck presentation .pptx. It can be a web page you build in D2L. Click New, Create a File, and you get something like this. If I install a YouTube video properly, it embeds on a topic page in a player. Uploaded files such as Word documents, PDFs, and PowerPoint presentations that are pretty common formats, D12 displays in a native viewer. In all cases, D12 creates not only a link to that item of content that I want students to see, it creates a topic page that either displays the item I've uploaded, or in the case of external websites, creates simply a placeholder page. So this link takes me to the website, but back in D12 there's just a placeholder page. The progress tool tracks visits to these pages in the content tab and you see which content topics students have visited and how often. Here is that content module we just looked at. Here are the topics and again it shows me when students visited and how often students visited the topic. Okay so there's a few caveats here though. D12 claims to know how much time a student cumulatively spent looking at a topic. In our testing, we have found this is unreliable. It underreports and may in some cases overreport this amount of time. But beyond that, what would this really tell you? Let's say, for example, I assigned an article I want students to read, and I supplied the PDF copy of the article as a content topic in the content area. Some students are probably going to read it right off the screen using the D12 native viewer. Other students may download the file by clicking download on the topic page 
and then open it perhaps in Acrobat Reader, where they have a set of markup tools to take notes and add marginalia, and so on. The latter students may only spend several seconds on this topic page. If you've made course readings available at the beginning of a semester, a diligent student may have gone through the content area and downloaded all the relevant readings for the course, printed them out, and so the last time they visited a topic page for a particular reading may be weeks or months ago. This would suggest maybe they weren't a very good student when the opposite may be true. So the report on accumulated time that D12 adds to each topic may not be very helpful at all, and the last visited date should be viewed in the context of other things you know about that student. Another caveat is that if you have made content available by any other path besides the content area in your D2L course space, students may not access its topic page in D2L. So in this example of a website link I have, if I also supplied that website link in my syllabus, or I just mentioned to students I wanted them to go to a website and they found it on their own through Google, then they may never visit the content topic page in D2L and D2L's progress tool would report them as having never visited this website, when this could be false. If you make content available via Google Drive and via D2L, there may be a possibility students access that content directly through Google Drive and never visit its topic page in D2L. Another caveat is that while the progress tool shows modules, it does not show if the student has visited the module page, but not clicked on any particular topic. Okay, so for these and potentially other circumstances, always bear in mind some context when viewing the report of students' access of content topics. That said, you can still imagine how this might be useful. The simplest example is, I uploaded the syllabus to D2L. That's how students were supposed to get a hold of the syllabus. Did they ever visit the syllabus topic page? If not, that might be an obvious indicator for why a student's having trouble in my class. A more sophisticated example might be, let's say I build an online lesson in D2L. So I have here some web pages, each containing parts of content or parts of a procedure, and then I have a pacing quiz, and then students go on to further web pages, and perhaps the whole lesson concludes with a pacing quiz. So the student proceeds through the lesson, page by page, and takes the quizzes that are embedded along the way, and D2L records every page they visited, how many times they visited it, or if they did not visit a page at all. This can give you some clue as to how students are interacting with this lesson. Added to the reports quizzes supply on how students answered quiz questions, this can be a powerful way for understanding how your students are learning content. It's worth pointing out that the progress tool is also available to students. They see what you see. In their case, they click their name in the upper right and choose progress. So you can notify students at the beginning of the semester that they can review how often they've accessed your course and how often they've accessed individual content topics. This can help students reflect on how engaged they've been with your course. Lastly, you are able to modify the progress report view. On any particular student's progress summary, click Settings, and you can add or take away different tools within the tool set. So for instance, let's say I don't use checklists, I don't use surveys, I'm not interested in a whole bunch of other things because I may get data from quizzes or drop boxes or discussions by looking at the data sets they supply within those tools. And I'll just remove a few other things that I'm not interested in. And so I've now honed this progress report down to exactly what I'm interested in or what I want my students to be interested in and left out what's not useful for this class and my students will have access to this same simplified report.